such a, a con artist. You're an Get the out of here. Oh! The nonsense, Robert. It's all nonsense <laughs> across the board. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to Splash. Today, we are going to talk about the five biggest Shark Tank scams. Make sure to like and subscribe, and stay till the end to see how these two cowboys piss off the sharks. Number one, Ryan Naylor's stimulating SL watches. Ryan Naylor appeared on Shark Tank with a pitch of his SL watch product, claiming that it can boost its wearer's balance and speed when faced with difficult decisions. Naylor tried to convince the sharks that it was all in the power of his negative ion technology. Unfortunately for him, no real scientific study of his product shows evidence of his claims. Mark Cuban quickly noticed the apparent scam and dismissed Naylor from the show in the middle of his pitch. Just That's for you. That's okay, you keep it. Okay. Thank you. Mark, are you allergic to positive, negative ion stuff? No, I'm allergic to scams. Seriously, this is not new. It's been disproven. What you saw was the placebo effect. However, Mr. Wonderful was willing to make a deal with him. Kevin O'Leary played along with Ryan, stating that if he is willing to admit that his own product is a fraud with no evidence, he would invest. Ryan undoubtedly denies the possibility of his product being a scam, but even he sounded unsure. Number two. Keto Diet Pills Scam A shady diet pill company with an equally suspicious product got into major trouble for lying about their success on Shark Tank and falsely stating that their product received incredible feedback on the show. This, of course, was quickly debunked in one of Shark Tank's social media posts, addressing the public that they had absolutely nothing to do with the Keto Diet Pills Company. They warned the audience to be cautious and stay away from the so-called miraculous pills. Even Mark Cuban tweeted out uh, that this is a scam. If you see anything like this, report it to the FTC. To make matters worse, numerous reports surface of people that have been scammed by this company after not achieving the desired results of the promised weight loss or not getting the packages they ordered. Customers soon became furious when they realized that all they were paying for was a placebo effect and they had been tricked. Number three, Pavlock shocking wrist device. This is another case of an entrepreneur that firmly believes in his product despite not having any supporting facts. Pavlock arrives on the show with an actual decent idea. His product is a wristband that shocks you every time you do something wrong with the intent of removing bad habits, such as smoking or biting your nails. Sadly, the execution in practice doesn't come as close as in theory. Leaving aside the fact that the price tag of the device matches the one of a new Apple Watch, his approximate evaluation of $500,000 for just 3.14% of his company raised a few eyebrows. But that wasn't the big issue. Pavlok had no real proof that his product even worked, and on top of that, he was rude. What percentage of time does it not work? Uh, it doesn't work if you don't want it to work. So if you use it on sugar, after about three or four days on like a cookie or tortilla chips, you'll start to notice the flavor changes. Yeah, you You're do. such a, a con artist. I'm absolutely not. It got even worse when Mr. Wonderful offered to do a deal with him, only for Pavlok to refuse to work with him, which led to some choice words by Kevin O'Leary. Number four, Revester. Bill Leons walked out onto the Shark Tank stage and introduced himself as the owner of Revester, the real estate search engine of the future, as he called it. Bill wanted the Sharks to invest $250,000 in exchange for 10% of his company, which sounded reasonable at first. He explained that Revester gave away information that typically only investors in real estate would have access to, and it was perfect for the first time home buyer who was new to the market. Bill pointed out that the hardest part of making money in real estate is to find the right deals, but Revester will now be able to solve that. Then it tells you which properties have the most potential in a map and list view. It gives you all the key real estate indicators that are associated with the property. One of the sharks, Kevin O'Leary, was sold on the idea. He asked him multiple questions, but when he found out that Bill came from the same financial field as him, he asked him how exactly the investors would know how to weed out the terrible deals from the good ones. Bill could not give a definitive answer, making his revester look like a fortune teller. Robert eventually could not stand him anymore and called him out as a con artist and a scammer. Number five, Hillbilly Clothing Line. Mike Abaticcio and Sean Lees appeared on Shark Tank as equal partners and founders of their clothing brand Hillbilly. They seemingly came on the show looking for a shark investor to invest $50,000 for 25% equity in their company. Their product seemed like a breath of fresh air and a seemingly good investment after the pitch. Western style t-shirts and hats appealed to the sharks and the two partners ended up getting a deal from not one, but three of the sharks. However, when the cameras rolled out, 
the two partners quickly changed their minds for a surprising reason. When they went out to do an interview, Mike and Sean revealed that they just wanted to be on TV to get free advertisement and didn't actually want to do a deal with the Sharks. Yeah, you know, we try to paint an image and, uh, you know, when we go and do our events, we keep it high energy, we got the music playing, we got the girls around and we have a good time with it and we wanted to show that out there. Of course, as you'd expect, the Sharks were visibly upset. Well, guys, that is it for now. Thank you all for watching. 